So what are the clinical presentations with which they'll present to us? So they'll have amenorrhea or decreased menstruation that is oligomenorrhea. Then they'll have hirsutism and acne. Then they'll have infertility they have, and most of them are obese. Now the question comes, will thin, PCO, thin patients don't have PCOS? Thin can also have PCOS but obese people have more chances of PCOS. Actually to be frank, thin, post, thin PCOS is more difficult to treat. And the next thing, 75% of them have insulin resistance. So these are the clinical presentations, what they can present to us with. The next thing is that, what are the syndromes which are associated with this? The syndromes which are associated with this is we have hair and syndrome. That is hyperandrogenism. Insulin resistance. And acanthosis nigricans. So these patients have a blackish discolory. What is acanthosis nigricans? So you can see a picture here. It was asked as an image based in the previous uh, la uh, last year exam. So it is dark velvety patch which are present in the crevices like axillary or on the neck. So it is, an it is a marker for insulin resistance. It's a marker for insulin resistance. Where else will you have acanthosis nigricans apart from insulin resistance? Is it a marker anywhere else? Yes, you can also see acanthosis nigricans in gastric carcinomas, GA carcinomas also. So this is one syndrome. The another syndrome which they, have, they will have is metabolic syndrome. The other syndrome which they can present to you or which they have is metabolic syndrome. Now, long term, what are the long term complications with the patients with PCOS? The long term complications which they can have in a patient of PCOS are, so most of them can land up in diabetes. Here the level of estrogen is more. What happens when level of estrogen is more? What will happen to the endometrium? Endometrium will also grow. So they have more chance of endometrial hyperplasias. And endometrial carcinomas. Estrogen also helps in the proliferation of the breast. So they will also have increased risk of breast cancer. Syndrome X. And they have chances of getting osteoporosis also. Why osteoporosis is the effective, most effective estrogen that is estradiol is decreased. So bone mineralization is little less. So because of that they can also land up in a long term for the osteoporosis. And because of the obesity also one of the reasons why they have in long term of osteoporosis. So these are the complications when any patients of PCOS can land in, in a long term. So we have finished the pathophysiology, we have finished the clinical picture which they present to you and we have finished what are the complications which the PCOS patient can land in. What is the investigation or how do you diagnose? The diagnosis is by Rotterdam's criteria, very clear to you all. And one more thing, all the patients with PCOS, you should definitely go for sugar monitoring. That is insulin monitoring because, ins because many of them can land up in the diabetes. So for all patients with PCOS, you will do 2 hours oral glucose challenge test. For all patients, you should definitely do 2 hours oral glucose challenge test. The next thing is, what are the hormones which are increased and what are the hormones which are decreased in a patient with PCOS? That we should be knowing. I think by the understand if you have already understood the PCOS, because there are many questions on these hormones increase and decrease. So if you would have understood the PCOS already, I think it, it's not a matter of by hearting the table because you all clearly know what hormones are increasing and what hormones are decreasing. So coming to the hormonal changes, what har in which are hormones are increasing and which hormone decreasing, I believe you don't require to by heart this table if you have already understood the pathophysiology. So taking in the pathophysiology into consideration, 
Now you answer me what are increasing and what are decreasing. The first thing we all know that in the gonadotrophins, which gonadotrophin is increasing? LH is increasing, yes. So we'll write here what are increasing and we'll write here what are decreasing. So LH is increasing, yes. And what is decreasing? Because of the negative feedback. So FSH is decreasing. So there is a reversal of ratio of LH and FSH in patients with PCOS. LH is more compared to FSH. The next thing is because of the LH theca cell hypertrophy. What is it lead, doing to the what is it doing to the uh, theca cells? Theca cells are hypertrophied. When theca cells are hypertrophied, what hormones will increase? It will increase the levels of androgen. So there is increase in the androgen and here that you don't have something like this. The next thing is that there is increase in levels of estrone here and here there is decrease in estradiol. What there is increased insulin resistance. So increase in insulin and increase in insulin growth factor 1. And here there is decrease in the you have some hormone called sex hormone binding globulin. Now, I heard many students asking me that uh, there is a question where there is the free testosterone level is increased in. Now, free testosterone is increased in PCOS. Can anybody think why? Because sex hormone binding globulin is decreased. What is the action of sex hormone binding globulin? The action of sex hormone binding globulin is to hold this testosterone androgens. When that is decreased, what will happen to the free testosterone? It will increase. So here you have both total as well as increase in the total and increase in free testosterone. So the what, is, what other hormones which is decreased? The other hormone which is decreased is the progesterones are decreased because of the anovulation. There is no progesterone. So these are the hormones which are decreasing and we, these are the hormones which are increasing. Not only that, they also cause the metabolic syndrome. So in some patients, you have, see LDL is increased. LDL is increased. LDL and triglycerides are increased. Whereas what decreases are HDL, HDL decrease. And very few patients have rise in prolactin level.